What is up, guys? So I'm trying something new. So first episode here of what I guess I'm going to be trying to do interviews with people from favorite bands. And, you know, I'm going to try to make this about you guys, not about me. I'm going to try to interview as many people as you want per request or try to shoot my shot with anyone who I got an opportunity to. And yet here we are in the full circle around August of 2019, 2021, I say. I tried, I DM'd a certain person who's on me on my left. I didn't get an answer, but it's okay. But here we are the full circle now. Without further ado, guys, my first guest <laughs> is the legend himself, Tim Farrick from Dance, Gavin Dance, and Wolf and Bear. How are you, man? Thanks for having me, dude. I'm really good. And and I'm glad I'm glad that you just hit me up out of the blue on Twitter. <laughs> I got, listen, I got lucky with that tweet. I was like, you know what? He's replying, so you know what? Let me shoot my shot real quick. Actually, that's true. If I'm like actually actively using it, yeah, I thought that was funny that you did that. And I was, was like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> sounds good, yeah. So <laughs> it's like I tried, those who've been following me since like my college radio career, I found a passion, you know, doing interviews, you know, getting to know artists more. And yeah. with, with with Tim, you know, it's I tried getting Dance Gavin SB one of my first any member from Dance Gavin SB one of the first members. So I was like, let me try Tim, let me hit Tim up first. Easy. easy. <laughs> didn't think it'd be that easy. I thought it'd be easy, you know, but then I hit up every single member, didn't get an answer, and here we are a year later. That's difficult, yeah. And like it, it's it's amazing, you know, how like I, we were discussing how things, you know, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be, you know, if you're humble, respectful, you know, you, you know, you, you, you get your rewards at the end of the day. For sure. Yeah, totally. Real recognizes real. Exactly. <laughs> kind of the bottom line. Exactly. So here we are now. You're the first guest of my untitled show. We'll get into that. But Tim, so mm -hmm. let's talk about. Let's first talk about you real quick, and then we'll get into the juicy details that I think many people want to get into. Sure. How have, yeah. you, how have you been? You know, this year has been interesting. Past year and a half has been interesting. Dude, yeah. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was I was obviously bummed like everyone else about the not touring thing, and the and like the craziest part about it was we had already rehearsed for the tour got our crew, got our buses, got our lighting, got everything ready, you know, and like down, we were down in LA at the venue the day that like everything started to shut down. And like, so we were there, it was like pouring rain in LA, which is always weird. And then uh, basically I woke up and they were like, yeah, the, the sh this show is off and pretty much the rest of the tour is off. So we like, just get back in the bus and drive home the next day, <laughs> unload everything. And then all the crew goes home. That was like just an extreme bummer. But like at that point, didn't know how long it was going to last. So I was like, all right, whatever, maybe I'll enjoy my time off and like try to get some more music written and all this stuff. But man, like the amount of times they've, they've had to reschedule that tour, just like kept messing up our plans. Then obviously we did the live streams, which was cool for, you know, for what it's worth. And then, then towards the end of last year, what we did like Tree City 2 and then started talking about doing a new album. Meanwhile, Wolf and Bear has been writing the album that we've got. We've been working on that for like almost a year, probably more. So eventually 2020 became like one of the, one of the more busy years. I've ever had. I thought it, I thought it was going to be like a ton of downtime. I mean, <laughs> without the touring. Um, but the good thing is, uh, we got all that we got all that work done, so that like once touring comes back, we're just going to have a ton of material to release. And then you know, both of my bands. So now we're now we're kind of in a good spot. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. So yeah, clearly you know. You thought, you know, one would think like, you know, I got time on myself, but for you guys, it was actually more hustle. Yeah, it made it. I think I'm, I'm sure like I'm sure other bands feel that way, too, especially ones that did like live streams and stuff like that. Of course. Yeah, no, there was more hustle for sure. Like 
Well, I guess I it, like, what, what's that? No, sorry, sorry. I guess, so I guess the answer is my, that's going to answer my question of like, whether like, you know, the pandemic, you know, affected you like creatively within writing or like, you know, didn't affect you at you all. Know, like one, it, it, it gave us more time uh, to be creative and, and all that, but definitely didn't want to write songs about the pandemic or anything like super downer. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I actually think that right now there's been more awesome music being released in the last like couple months or year than it, in a long time. Um, there's, it seems like, it seems like a lot of people went into the studio and like did some awesome work during the the time off from touring so i don't think it was all bad you yeah. know but for sure we took advantage of that so yeah that's, that's great that's great to know you have to know that you and uh, you and the guys managed to keep you know try not to get distracted that like with like the negativity that society was like bringing upon them. yeah i well i mean like i did i'm not gonna write write a record about being like locked into your house that's for sure <laughs> exactly no, i don't think anyone yeah but anyway um so then you guys you know you were on a hustle you did the live stream for afterburner the tree city sessions mm -hmm. too and also yeah. the wolf and bear at the plus cavern yeah we were grinding yeah. every day my guy but tell me like <laughs> being like you know without doing the live streams without audience the first time like the first time doing the live stream with afterburner did you feel like a little weirded out, like not playing in front of people? It's just like, you know, yeah, it, it definitely is always weird. Yeah. It's, we should have invited like more friends and family to, to some of that. Like, cause the first one was in like sort of this big warehouse where we would like kind of practice our show with like the lights. There was some people hanging out, but it was mostly just, yeah, just us like, like doing the songs to, yeah just to the internet <laughs> and yeah. then the next one with the bridge felt a little bit more like an event but obviously there was like you know i mean i don't know how we had to do that because there were there was some fans that figured out what was going on and got over to the bridge and could listen and watch which is cool but um there wasn't a lot so there was there was still like still kind of no audience at that thing <laughs> But yeah, it's funny. It just feels like you're playing to yourself and, and the camera guys. Uh, yeah, and the crew production. But Tree City Sessions, still want to talk a little about that. So I playing at the Tower Bridge, you know, at that time when live streams were first coming out, you know, it was more like, oh, yeah, we're, we played at a warehouse or like a little event, you know. Mm -hmm. But you guys were probably, like, I think one of the, the first bands were like, you know what, let's take this and perform it at like somewhere historic being like you know tower bridge that was actually interesting yeah you know it's funny too because it made me feel like uh it's like almost felt like we were doing like some beatles rooftop performance <laughs> yeah because it felt like it was like the end of the band but it, obviously it's that's not the case no, but like i, I but don't yeah it was just like the event the event in itself made it feel that way it was just kind of strange, but uh, I mean, that thing still came out cool. I mean, yes, that was like, I was, yeah, it was a great live show. You know? <laughs> yeah. Continue. Um, what were we going on about? <laughs> tower Bridge. Live stream. Oh, the Tower yeah. Bridge thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. We, like, we we didn't realize, you know, how serious they were about like uh, shutting down that bridge. I mean, obviously. I think it was that hard at the time because you know COVID was still like s still low-key lockdown so there wasn't probably as much tra foot traffic or traffic traffic on that bridge but that was cool we just went out there and like played and played a bunch of songs and froze our asses off and you know <laughs> no that's fine that was the last I guess DGD show that we've played a while uh, yeah did you guys have to go to Governor Newsom for approval or just like the mayor? I think I think the uh, production team did, yeah. And I, I I'm not sure how that works, but I'm, we definitely got the okay. <laughs> you know what? Shout out to Gavin Newsom on that. <laughs> I guess. I mean, that could have just been a paper that fell on his desk that he hit. You know, he didn't even read. So. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I wasn't. 
it wasn't the tower bridge i'm sure they would have done something else interesting you know as well but i i worked out better in the end you know it, mm -hmm. it brings publicity and it brings you know yeah bring good publicity to cali so. it's wow. sacramento cool yeah exactly. <laughs> so like you know what people there's there you go uh but yeah. it was good overall i enjoyed it the the lights the set lists were great but you know hey. Um, if there was one song that that wasn't picked that you feel that you felt like you wanted to play, which one was it that you felt like, oh, I can't believe that one didn't make the cut? I'm trying to think what was in there that I would have preferred to play. Most of them I actually did like playing. Um, no, I can't think of any of them, man. Like, obviously, we didn't play any new stuff off Afterburner. Probably that's probably like. I mean, the set was 14 songs, so like that was already enough for me. I I, I was kind of just glad we got like that blue dream in. That was interesting to to, to do that one. Yeah, and there was a lot of surprises yeah. too. Like when you when you first start live, you're like, oh my god, they're playing NASA. Like, oh, they're playing Blue Dream. Like, this is a been a while since we played NASA. Yeah, once in a while it'll hit us that like we haven't played a certain song live in like like two years or something like that. Like. Some songs we just play so much, they get kicked out of rotation. Other songs stay in forever. Like, it seems like we've been playing We On The Night for the longest time ever. Like, it, it feels like we can't play a show without doing that one. Um, but like, that's kind of the good thing for DGD is uh, like, we have a lot of flexibility with what songs we choose for the sets. Um, and like, yeah, obviously there's going to be people who like are always going to leave saying they're mad because we didn't play like one song that they wanted to hear. I mean, I, I don't when know. you get older, you start to realize that that's how a lot of things work. <laughs> like, you I, know, I, I, I was I was OK. with I was OK with the set list. I was like, I got nothing to complain, really. I'm just happy to see and voted. So, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, you voted for it. So. <laughs> Yeah, I may get I may get he on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised that I was kind of, the only only one I was surprised by was awkward that got picked. I just didn't realize it, that was the more popular track off of uh, instant gratification. But hey, it'd be like that. No, people like that one. Yeah, no, I I kind of like it's funny. Like I'll have to like relearn the track and stuff, and I'll, like get a newfound appreciation for the song. Yeah. And that's how it is. You know, that's sometimes, you know, when you don't play a song, a certain song for a while, you know, when, at the time of recording, it's like, all right, this made this song. But then when you like replay it again live, it it makes you like appreciate it more. I was like, huh, like there's actually a meaning to this. Yeah, totally. Oh, you know what? Now I just remembered. I think uh, like Carl Barker was probably the only one that I would have probably preferred to play. So fans, you I know. Think, well, yeah. <laughs> So now you know for Tree City Sessions 3, guys, Carl Barker. Yeah, that would be exactly right. <laughs> wait, wait, no, we did it on the first one. That's why. Oh, there you go. No, never mind. Don't vote for it. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. That's why that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It wouldn't be bad. Anymore. We can do another rendition. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, just like picking out some of the DVM2 songs is always interesting. Those ones kind of we don't play them as much live no no it's it, from either downtown battle mountain songs like it's very rare you hear them live i'm trying to think we were doing like oh open your eyes and look north on one we, we'll, we'll pick some random ones once in a while we'll do like actually i'm not gonna ahead. lie when it when like the fan vote came out i actually voted for open your eyes and look north i was like this song has to make it on tracy that would have been cool yeah we would have been able to do it we were playing that on tour like not 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 even any, like maybe two years ago we were playing that like at yeah. least on the before we were playing it yeah I remember, well, well to be fair i i haven't had the fortune to see you guys live yet oh my god it's crazy I know. you're in new york yeah i'm new york yeah you guys are playing my show listen we'll, we'll get into yeah. that later. we'll get into that later <laughs> we'll discuss that later <laughs> but i want to talk about i want to talk about right now so You've been teasing. There's there's teases. DGD ten. It's coming. Not now, but soon. 
I try not to tease too much because I know. Yeah, because no fans are gonna be like, oh my god, you said this, you said this. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's let 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 let's re let's let's yeah. let me rephrase the questions. Yeah, there's no time frame on that. Yeah, I mean, I teased a little bit in the studio. That's all, you know. Yeah, just like, look, look a little bass riff. So yeah, I guess. Like, what week too much of something. <laughs> yeah, and then you know there was Matt. You know, with like a what's this? What's this instrument called? Was he doing some percussion or something on his? Uh, with the recently, because he did just go do some percussion like literally yesterday. Yeah, I think maybe, it was. I maybe it was the viper slap or something. <laughs> and with like a tambourine, I think with the tambourine. Oh yeah, that's right. Never mind. I saw that. Yeah, no, yeah. We we always go back and do percussion. Those, that always enhances the songs. Like it sounds, it sounds silly, but it does. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but for this new album, like, what can you tell a little bit about what? For my basically, what what can you say, legal <laughs> from a legal perspective? <laughs> that is a good question. What can I say? Um, I mean, I think it's like public information now considering we've posted about it that like uh as far as guest guitarists go so far um like more- and- obviously andrew is playing guitar on like some of the songs and then uh martin's the- record. what's that martin's gonna be on the record martin, of course martin's basically been on i think martin's been on almost every dgd album since i've rejoined the band uh, and then Louis from Wolf and Bear got on two tracks. Um, like he's done Suspended in this Disaster. And then he did that Third Eye Blind cover with us um, okay. a while back. Yeah. Louis, Louis, yeah, Louis is fun. Like he, he understands, you know, how DGD's music's written and he'll throw down once in a while. Um, I don't know who else is on the record right now. I can't. Drawing, drawing blanks. We haven't really sorted that, all of that out. <laughs> It'll come together, but um, mm-hmm. oh yeah. So like, I guess like was I? Don't know, I can't really. I don't know if I can ask this yet, but the concept, like, well, what are, what are you guys trying to aim for for this new record? That's uh, that's that's all still being handled. I mean, like sonically, the uh, the music all came together. Like, um, it all makes sense to me. Like when I listen to the, to the instrumentals of the album right now and some of the vocal demos and stuff. So it's, I, I can't put it into words because like there's no album cover yet. There's no, no. or anything like that, but um, it'll be like, it'll all come together really quick once we get through, you know, through vocals and get to the end of the end of the actual recording sessions. That's usually when everything gets put together. Mm-hmm. I understand. Same with like Bear right now. Like no, no, uh, no album title, no album art yet. But all the music's like coming together, and you know we're on to vocals right now. Um, and then we've got some cool features. Like we've always been sort of anti-feature um, for Wolf and Bear, just because we wanted to like always see like see if like our songs could like people could fuck with our songs without having to be pulled in by like this enticing guest vocalist from like another band as much as we think it's awesome you know I love guest vocals and stuff like that a lot of the times we would just keep it all in house uh just to see how we do on our own without any anyone else's cloud or anything like that um, but on this on this Wolf and Bear record, I was more like, all right, let's get some. Like, we're due for some features. Like, we haven't done anything like that. And um, like Andrew was like the first one that we, we talked to about the feature. And Andrew was like super down, and he did it so quick, and it sounds super awesome. So Andrew's on the record. Um, that's, that's, that's gonna be awesome to hear for fans as well. So. Yeah, and then like I wrote a track uh, like specifically in mind for Chris. Uh, the singer of Closure in Moscow. So that one um, should happen. Sounds down. Send him the track. He can pass if he wants to, but uh, I think he'll do it. So that's there's two right there. This, so we got Andrew and Chris from Closure. 
Um, and then yeah, it might, we might go for like one or two more since we have so many songs, like, you know, we know so many talented singers that can easily, you know, throw some vocals down on Wolf and Bear and like have it fit and, you know, make it interesting and make it, make it kind of their own. You yeah. know, it's, I think it's just interesting to hear other singers take on your band. Yeah. Like, when, um, what's the thing? Like try to like create, put their art into your work, like collaborate. Yeah. Like, well, it's like just, you, you know, anime crossovers, you know? <laughs> there you go. Like an anime crossover. <laughs> yeah. That, that's a good reference. That's a good reference. Yeah. If you want to hear a crossover. <laughs> <laughs> so for like Wolfenberg, now that we got like the DGD out of the way, you know, it, that's mm-hmm. as much as I can talk about. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I don't want people being like, oh, that's not enough. No, that's enough for you. I so, mean, it's just, I wish wow. it could be, but I. <laughs> So those things have to be a secret. Exactly. Move on, people. Move on. Like mm-hmm. right now, Bear, this is we're looking for like a probably a summer release of anything. I want yeah, we, I mean we gotta we gotta shoot for it to be out either before or during the tour. Uh I mean not in it's not the end of the world if it doesn't come out during that time, as long as we have like um, you know, a music video and a single or two. And it's in, you know, that's fine. I, I don't know yet. Like um, they're, they were jamming through the vocals really quick, like last week. So they still have, you know, they still have like 10 or 11 more tracks to do. But those guys are pretty fast at recording. Yeah. Uh, because we pre-write um, we can, like 90, 90% of the stuff is pretty much written before we go into the studio so that there's, there, we don't waste time in the studio or, you know, like that's not a good thing to do. That's how you rack up a really big bill. <laughs> it's called procrastination, but except we don't want to do that because again, yeah, I mean, they, they have the luxury of recording at my, either my home studio or the studio we practice at for our demos and stuff like that. So like, yeah, we get everything squared away before recording and it, and like really make sure that the vocals are all going to make sense and be balanced and catchy and appropriate for the track and everything. Um, and then we're recording that with uh, DG Diesel guitar player, Josh Benton. Oh, and Josh, okay. Josh has done like, you know, he's done like Hail the Sun's Wake and uh, he did their EP and then he did the... Uh, he did an one idol album he did the first stolas album he did the secret band ep josh has done a lot of stuff um and some of that's like some of my favorite stuff to listen to is like oh. some of his work so i've been i've been playing in bands and recording with josh since i was 16 years old so it's like pretty funny to still like drive over to his home studio to make records in my like 30s <laughs> <laughs> hey it's a full circle like you guys are like i feel like within like the pro star course scene within sacramento like everything everyone's so close to each other yeah yeah no i know and there's not really that much uh like like uh drama or like throwing shade at each other or anything like that honestly mo- most people get along pretty pretty damn well and can work with each other and write and like you know form groups and everyone yeah just stare. it's 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 very yeah. strange to have that big of a like social network of musicians that are all on the same page it's like uh yeah like it's, it's the anime crossover but like more maybe more it's like an mcu we'll call it the yeah, totally it's weird it, and then like i'm lucky too because if i have to go on tour with dgd and wolf and bear is trying to do shows they have like at least two or three homies that can come and play bass for me and do a really good job and you know and like they're good musicians and stuff like that so yeah it's it's pretty awesome <laughs> exactly and i find that's fucking great to be honest that's everything. yeah i've learned to appreciate that big time that we have like all this access you know to to other musicians and stuff yeah but um so New Wolf and Bear, though, that's going to be, that's, that's good that, you know, so how many tracks are we looking at? Uh, we've got 13, and then I think I'm going to do, like, an intro track to the album that's, uh, might, might be, like, a little more instrumental, but, like, 
because I like 14 is just a rounder number to me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, it should be it should be like that. You know, it's 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 going to be longer than the first album. I mean, like we haven't put a record out since uh, 2017, which is really crazy to me that yeah. we could keep people engaged because I mean, the way that we did that was by dropping uh, the EP and the singles in between because we couldn't, I don't know, we just like didn't have the time or the drive to go back in and do a full album. But now it's awesome because we actually kind of workshop the band sound with the EP and the singles because we were changing things and doing different stuff to test the water of like what we could get away with in Wolf and Bear that's different. So then when we went to make the record, we were a lot, a lot more aware of like what sounds we were going to do and what directions we would go and stuff like that. So it's it's going to be interesting having like a 2017 first album and then like a 2021 second album. That's a, a huge gap. It, it, hey, man. I mean, it took Tool 10 years to make their fifth album. So it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some and it, you know like some bands like are so afraid to make their second album too like for <laughs> like if they especially if they had like a like a hit or like a big big first album like because a lot of bands can drop the ball and like disappoint on that and like dude we were, we were not about to do that <laughs> no i mean I, I, there's a lot of pressure by what well, you guys have been teasing on social media i think it's been amazing um Thanks, personally, man. personally and you know the tracks are looking better and better day by day so i think there's more hype to it trying to yeah yeah i'm gonna try to keep keep uh like yeah keep up with the like the social media content and studio so I'm, sometimes it's like hard to it's hard to do that um like when people are working in the studio it's like not always fun to have a phone or a camera out when you're working and your voice is cracking or you're having trouble with something like <laughs> It, it, it's like best to just try and capture some of the more fun moments in the yeah. studio. That's usually what we're trying to deliver. I mean, that's why there's not a ton of, uh, it's not a ton of footage of DGD recording is because it's like, we're at work, like in it, you know? Exactly. It's like a, when you're at work, it's more like when you're sitting like in a head of job, like you're not going to take your phone out and start recording like what your coworker is doing, you know? No, not really. Yeah, I kind of like uh, even when I'm in the studio, I almost low key feel bad filming stuff like that sometimes because I like feel, you know, I don't want to make it awkward or anything like that. But, you know, uh, as far as like what, what we have with Wolf and Bear right now, everyone's pretty comfortable in the studio and, and we can get that footage and, you know, or pictures or whatever and at least put them online so people know that the band is active and doing stuff. Um, Cause sometimes it does look like, you know, the band doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> like if we don't post for like two months or something, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I try to make sure that people stay interested in what we're doing, you know, even, even if we're kind of in laid, a lower tier. Laid back. Well, that's the proper part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, I get bored and we'll do like the merch drops and stuff like that too, you know. That's good. That's good. You know, to keep the band active, you know, and to keep fans more engaged in this stuff. But I think that I think within the fans, like given the year we've had, it's more understandable. Like people should understand, like, you know, we just went through like the most fucked up situation that one can. Yeah, imagine. it was awful. Yeah. So like, don't expect things to be like, oh, OK, we're going to start dropping again. Like, no, it's going to be different now. Yeah, for sure. Well, now, yeah, right now we're, we've kicked into high gear for Wolf and Bear. So, like, yeah, as as the as the days go, we get more and more close to having the record done. Like, as far as the vocals, we just go we go all out with the vocals in the studio um, and the production and all that stuff. But um, no, I I would say for that, like, sooner sooner than later, we're gonna be able to start sharing. Uh, like you know probably snippets of songs and stuff i mean like we we try to do every day we get in the studio we at least try to like put something online that's slightly entertaining <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fine you know like we'll take it but um <laughs> with, with new wolf and bear is there i don't know if i can say this to be honest but is there an album title yet working title yeah no album title yet like that's i feel like that's gonna 
we're gonna have to have like all the songs with singing on them and our, our band's pretty good at like tossing around ideas like and everyone will will jump in and do it but um no like those concepts like they'll they'll come at a certain time and you know and it's like a eureka thing <laughs> <laughs> um, spot, you know yeah like i'm trying to think when we did yeah like we did the ep we didn't title that we just called that ep but all of the song titles on that were demo titles that was like the first time we've actually uh not changed yeah not changed titles and just released everything that way so delito lifeguard red hen uh scorch Scorch. yeah yeah and then the same thing with like that eat or the seven inch was street rat and monstro that was funny because we kind of like disney themed it um but not super on purpose it was just funny because like louis had a song called monstro and then marcus said street rat on that other song so we called it street rat which is like an aladdin reference um so that's that was easy to put that art together. It was like, all right, give me a street rat, give me a give me a big whale. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that's so the theme. It, it comes on the spot then. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Uh, I think it could be it's gonna be awesome. Um, so now so I guess the real question comes now. Here's a tough one. With Rise acquiring or merging with Blue Swan. Mm-hmm how is do you guys how is i i shouldn't say how is it gonna affect the album process because you know blue song was independent yeah it actually hasn't affected it at all yeah for us i mean like um i think obviously like we spoke about this a little bit with the idola record being you know taking longer to come out i mean it's really like it's not there's no real story there it's just like paperwork stuff and once that gets settled then then they can do all the right things to launch the album so that's gonna i mean that's gonna come that'll be before wolf and bear for sure like at least there's that um like yeah so i'm I'm hoping basically by the time i we finish up wolf and bear and get that like mixed mastered that paperwork stuff be taken care of too so that we don't have to wait or anything um but that's all it is. It's this is a smart move, like waiting for the proper release and having the bigger distribution and having more marketing behind it. You're, you know, yeah. you you want that to reach uh, as many people as possible. I so think, it's worth the wait for the band. Yes, um, I don't. Know. I've yeah, they're from like this, I guess, and then they sort of all also th- thinking. I'm thinking within the business perspective too. So. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, yeah, a lot of people don't understand that. And like, just like, it's funny because, it's, yeah, it's like almost antagonizing at this point. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I also kind of just see it as funny. Um, but, you know, it's like, for me, I'm really uh, impulsive and stuff like that. And when I finish music, I want it out immediately. Obviously, with DGD, uh, I understand that there's a whole thing that it has to go through and the proper channels and all that um but like with wolf and bear for the last couple of things we were doing like the ep and the seven inches and stuff that was uh not on blue swan we were still signed to blue swan but we were just kind of going rogue we were like you know just doing it diy and they were okay with that because they knew that we weren't going to go like try to cut another deal with someone else or anything like that we were just doing it on our own. So it was pretty rad to like it, to just go into the studio, make two singles and like in a span of like two weeks or whatever, you got two songs done. And then I'm already sending it off to mix master and vinyl production so quickly, you know what I mean? And then, and then throw it on Spotify and, you know, it's not a huge rollout. There's not a ton of marketing behind it. Like it's really more word of mouth and like you, you know, take care of selling the records yourself and, and you take care of promoting it yourself. And that's, that's kind of, uh, that's fun in its own right. But, you know, now with, with an actual album, you want that to be handled correctly. Exactly. In the right hand 
with, you know, perfect. Yeah. And that would be, that's too, too much, too much for me. <laughs> no, I ain't, Hey, I'm not, I'm not trying, I'm not trying to get a, <laughs> I'm not trying to get a DM from rise and be like, what you talk about? I'm be like, uh, <laughs> No, yeah, they'll know. I mean, they'll be taking care of, yeah, our releases and stuff like that. Exactly. And, you know, but, I think that's something that, you know, fans unfortunately have to understand that, you know, like, yeah, you know, we want the music, but at the end of the day, you have to think of the marketing and the business standpoint from both the record. Yeah, there's, and- there's a correct way to do it. Yeah. And like the way that Wolf and Bear was doing it, not that it was just incorrect. It was just DIY and we were trying to get stuff out. Um, you just trying, you know, to get your out, trying to get your R out. Yeah. And, and like kind of hold people over in that gap between 2017 and now with, I mean, we did it with like, uh, what, like four songs on the EP, two singles. So we've only released six tracks in like four and a half, five years. And then, which is actually a testament to the first record that people still listen to that because, you know, that came out so long ago. But then again, with this new one, we we're trying to make sure that we made it like uh, there were, made sure there was so much substance that like people could sit on the next one for, you know, potentially that same amount of time. Only I would never wait that long again to make another record, you know, like the next Wolf and Bear album after this will probably be within a year or two, not, not three to four, you know, we're not going to wait all that time. So. Hey man, at the end of the day, I think fans are going to be appreciative and they'll, you know, they, they can do the way, but you know, at the end of the day, it's your art and you guys want to be able to put something that you're, that you guys are fucking proud of. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that like people aren't going to get sick of, yeah. Be, make it long lasting. It's yeah, no, I feel like right now because I did uh, the Wolf and Bear and the DGD record, like, like it's I feel super fulfilled. And uh, it's funny because like nobody's even really heard any, any of this stuff yet. It's all like just sitting, you know, waiting to be released at this point. But um, I do feel like I'm like, ooh, got like so much, so much music done, you know. <laughs> Exactly. And that's how it is. So, you know, I think it's point oh. it's within like that whole perspective, like you just got to wait. It's going to be a, a return later on. Yeah, for sure. And then like, you know, Royal Coda has got a record. Um, yeah. That they did with Chris Grummet and that'll probably, I'm sure I'm, it should come out before Wolf and Bear, I would imagine. Um, but like, yeah, no, I, I think uh, people that are fans of the genre, like, I'm not sure how aware they are, but there's a lot, of, there's a lot of good music that's going to come out soon and it all, it all already exists. So it's, that's, what's exciting. Like, it, you know, I, I get excited for my friend's band's releases too. Exactly. That's, that's, that should be. So, and also it, it helps because now with like, with, with the merger, it helps distribute, you know, vinyls and all that stuff because it's making, yeah. A- for sure. And then advertising and stuff like that, that we didn't have full access to and bigger budgets for music videos and stuff like that. That's, you know, that's nice. Like everything that Wolf and Bear has done has been, I mean, I don't think we've made a music video for anything over 2000 bucks. Like, I don't, you know, they're pretty small budget videos. Um, I, don't like think, I don't think a video needs to be expensive to be good, but like, I wouldn't mind doing something with a bigger budget. <laughs> no, I think that you don't want to be able to express yourself, but with for that, sure, do you see a possible, like, I guess with all these BSR bands in your and Wolf and Bear too, mm-hmm. with now with Rise merging, is there a possibility that in the future when everything's all settled, that there's a re-release of the Wolf and Bear you know, EPs, the first album we released uh, the final, but this time is just definitely, Yeah, you know what? That's a good question because I'm definitely going to try and get the uh, first album repressed with the original cover. When we did the pressing, we kind of did it ourselves with Blue Swan's Blessing. Um, I don't know. Like, they were always handling a bunch of stuff, and, like, I, I was, like... 
I can print, I can print the vinyl. I can take care of the distribution for it and all that. But we did like an alternate cover, which wasn't the original one from like one of the artists that we used, Micah Jennings. We used her for like so much, so much art. And uh, it became like a cohesive style for Wolf and Bear. So we used hers for the uh, the first one. And I liked it because it kind of like looks like a, uh, like it totally looks like a, a punk album, like a Operation Ivy record or something, the cover. It's just very simple and it, it's, it's kind of badass. But um, yeah, I think I think if I can get a reissue of that album, we'll have to like track down the original art files from the CD and blow that up and, and like just make a cool pressing of it. You know what I mean? Like do do some color vinyl gatefold yeah. thing. Yeah. Because now because now like you know these are these these are the pros with like these mm -hmm. numbers. Yeah. I mean, Wolf and Bear, but also, you know, you they can reprint, you know, you know, Idola, the Genitara to speak to List yeah. and, and Royal Coda, you know, Compassion, all all this other shit, you know, there's so much there's so much more. Like there's there's oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the the reissues for sure. I'm I'm sure like there will be a lot of stuff that, exactly. that gets, dude. Um, that's why I feel bad when I see people like paying a lot of money for a reissue. Yeah, you know, yeah, you should see how. Or not a reissue, but a, an original, because yeah. you know you'll pay like 150 bucks for like an original, and then it'll get reissued like a week later for like 20 bucks. So you you gotta be cautious with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try try to guess how much uh, Idola's. Uh, the genitara or to speak to listen go through on resale for a while i'm guessing like 100 150 nope more go up 300 yep they're under 300 to 400 mark because only oh wait oh wait I'm trying to think if i have that <laughs> oh wait well, you I probably have a couple of them but uh you might have a couple of them. <laughs> i don't remember yeah andrew just i got it i have I think I have two of their albums on vinyl, but that's crazy. If that's if that's the case, that's insane. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if they did like 500 or 1,000 or something I, like. I think that. it was like 300 when Dish and the Terror came out. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew always with like these impossible and these. No, and, and Wolf and Bear does it too. I don't know the names of some of the songs that are on the on our album too. This is a new one, right? Or. Oh, on the no, on the older one, on the new record, I don't think we're gonna do stuff like that. But on the old one, yeah, there's like out there's songs that I only know the demo title of. So I'm trying to find out and see if I can like find the the Idola uh, LP. Yeah, how much it's like worth, it, you know? Yeah, I mean, like Kurt had one that was going for a lot too, like a solo one. I think it was like Everything Is Beautiful or something that was going for a lot for a while. Yeah, well, well that's no. a good sign. That's always a good sign, and it's always a, also it's a good sign to reprint. But oh, you, know, you can't find the price, but yeah, around there. If you go like not try find on Discogs, but yeah, but if you Wolf go. Bear Wolf and Bear is finally, I think, at the we're almost at the end of our of vinyl pressing for the first album. I think I might have like I might have like 60 or 70 copies left of that and that'll be gone. And then I think Sight, the little seven inch for Sight that I have a, a fair amount, but those will be gone soon. I mean, every time I, I've done pressings for that, I've done 500 because if you go under 500, there's not your profit margin kind of dives. I think if you're ordering like two or 300 or whatever, 500 is kind of the, the number where you're like, okay, I'm going to make some money off this and it'll be worth it. Yeah. You might, might take a while to sell. You're definitely sitting on a, like a lot of boxes of records, but yeah, every, every wolf from their pressing is out of 500. And like the early ones I was doing, uh, I was doing the like, hand numbered out of and like after two pressings of that and i was hand numbering them out of 500 myself i stopped doing that <laughs> <laughs> and i love those 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 are always so cool like when you get a record and it's like hand numbered i always think that's like the most badass thing ever um but like yeah the first two i did or I, yeah i did the i did the full album and 
and then I did site hand numbered. And then after that, I stopped doing that. I was like, I, this is adding way too much time to the process of these. Yeah, man, but you know, it's good. You know, you got that. Um, you're just a hard worker, man. We appreciate that. I like it. Yeah, there's something about yeah. There's there's something about getting a hand numbered vinyl where you're like, wow, there's some extra labor went into this. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, you know, and then you know, fans. There's 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 a positive. So hopefully, um, mm -hmm. in the future. You know, people don't have to spend three hundred dollars on a wolf and bear vinyl or on an idol or vinyl. Yeah, I, it's you know what? I don't recommend that kind of stuff. I'm I'm a like I'm a sucker. I'll do that sometimes if I want a record bad enough. Like I kind of top out at like two hundred bucks or like one hundred fifty. That's kind of like I won't go over that for for things that I want. Yeah, literally. Yeah, like I remember when I got into Lil Dicky. I like uh, tracked down. I was like right when that show started, you know, airing, and I realized I was like, "Oh, this record's hard to find" or whatever. And like, I found a copy for like two fifty or something like that, and then I found another copy for two fifty. So I picked them both up, and then like two months later, they were going for like five hundred to seven hundred dollars a piece on on yeah. the web because there's there's a you know supply and demand issue going on there <laughs> yeah literally that, that's how it is unless like well i mean i'm a sucker for sneakers or like my jordans and my yeezys dude for sure i'm a, I, i'm a bit of a sneaker sucker too yeah but like i might like, i'll be like how much is the resale 350 yeah whatever but sometimes then, yeah and then with the final, i'll be like 400 well i don't know about that one yeah it depends it depends i like the uh i like the black Yeezys for like most of, you know, like whatever I'm doing during the day or playing shows, whatever. I like the, the black pairs of Yeezys and those are way, those are like 500 bucks a piece. Like you, you can't just, you have those. I have those. Yeah. 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 I, I bought, I bought two pairs cause I like them so much and I think they're comfortable shoes. They are. Uh, yeah. They're red. I, I saw someone saying that they were going to do those again, but, um, yeah, getting into like sneakerhead territory is dangerous, man. <laughs> it, it is. It is. It's not. Um, I know they're doing the Wave Runners again in August, so I'm oh, okay. I'm gonna try and get those. Those are those look very comfortable. But yeah, I wouldn't complain because I have my I have my cream whites and I got my black easy, so I'm fine. For sure. Yeah, they make it like almost like a lottery system now to get shoes. Like I I. <laughs> I saw these like Adidas South Park shoes and it was like tally. It looked yeah. like they were out of towel material. And I was like, oh my God, I, I need those so bad. And I like had to sign up for it and like click, put your credit card information in. And then if you win, they'll charge you obviously and send it. And like, I totally lost. And like, I was like, oh, I'm not. It's, I'm it's, this is the, the, the worst part about sneaker industry right now is these bots taking over. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's really, that's how it works in the vinyl game. That's how it works in collectibles and toys. It works that way. In almost, it's, and it's like, there's people, they're, they're just flippers and stuff like that. I, and I, and that's the reason why I get upset with the resale market. It's like, you're fucking over someone who actually got his hard earned money and wants to like, you know, spoil himself. For sure. Yeah. But you know what though? It, there it's, there's the free market aspect about it kind of works too because like say say you're in the right place in the right time and you pick up two pairs of those shoes right oh, yeah. one pair one pair for yourself and one pair you don't need then you're selling if that. you want something else in the future that's hard to get you could trade it or sell it sell and it. get exactly. that that's kind of how it works to me like i that's yeah, how i no, i agree i agree i'm not i'm not I, I i'd be a hypocrite if i said no that's wrong because i've done it myself too i'd be like yo i want this yeah I'll trade you this. Yeah, it's essentially trading. I mean, even if you just go sell it and make a huge profit and then go right. waste that on something that you wanted that's also expensive. I mean, that's that's the that's a smart way to play the game. Um you gotta adapt to the system. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I worked at a record store back in the day, so I understood how all this worked, you know, like 
Um, but yeah, there are, there's an element of like the people that kind of ruin it for everyone trying to get stuff and like, yeah, I mean, at that point, you know, what can you do? But you know, if you win, you win, if you lose. Something. Yeah. And I mean, I just, I actually think people, I mean, there's just something fun about the exclusive, uh, thing with that i mean it's like record store day when i when i when that started out i was working at the record store and i had no idea what it even was and dude it it was such a negative experience to watch people like rip through the bins and like get at like aggressive with each other because they're all trying to like get the same thing to flip or or maybe they want it or whatever but like I remember watching like record store days and like, like, dude, we would have to be like breaking up fights and stuff like that. And then after I worked at the record store, I would still go to record store day because I wanted to get stuff. And then, you know, I'd show up and it'd all be fucking gone. And, uh, you know, and then I just started to like sit at home and buy it, buy it off of eBay, off of the scalpers. Cause I'm like, I don't want to even go wait in line to not get this or have to fight another man for it. <laughs> like, Exactly. I'm like, it's not worth like record store eventually started making the numbers of uh higher. They started doing bigger pressing, so there was less of that like in, like infighting with the collectors and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh and then you know, like and then they started just making it kind of online at this point, you know. Online. Now you e-commerce now you just have to be signed up on the the newsletter like you just have to like look at your phone at the right time and be like oh crap that's first that's on sale like, exactly go get it now like this for me like i got the i bought the trees i pre-ordered the tree city sessions two vinyl from newberry so i got on nice it. yeah newberry you know what newberry is one of my favorite ones to get pressings i they always do cool ones i just like like my favorite let me see you know it's funny I had to do this. I had to get the Weezer. Oh God, awesome! The Weezer album with that Matthias did. I had to do that, and then uh, like I got that Kid Leroy off of uh, New Newberry too. Hey, nice, nice, nice. Got a couple copies copies of that. Yeah, uh, Newberry's sweet though. Yeah, they do good pressings. I'm I, I'm not sure if they've done DGD stuff yet. Well, I guess they did. They did Tree City, so. Yeah, so I managed to snag on that one. So like you said, you know, right place at the right time. Yeah, you know, for, for like DGD stuff, um, like obviously mostly almost everything will get repressed at a certain point. So if, if like people miss out on stuff, it's really not the end of the world. Um, the only things that, that are really quite rare in our world, I think are usually like tour exclusive stuff. Um, if you pay, if you do like the VIP, um, usually we have like pretty cool exclusive records for that. So those are like, I would say those are the only things that don't really get repressed is yeah. for, for stuff. That's more like, you gotta come get it. If not, well, those are cool. Those are sweet. We always use like alternate artwork and, you know, do, do weird stuff with it. Well, hopefully in New York, I'll manage to snag a couple. Yeah, you know, Under Oath was, or I mean, sorry, Under Oath, uh, uh, Urban Outfitters uh, was doing alternate covers for us, too. Yeah, that was cool. Were. But Under Oath is a good band, too, man. Thank, thanks for mentioning Yeah. <laughs> Under Oath's a good band. Under Oath's a great band. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, shit, look at that. I mean, we went on a full discourse. <laughs> anyway, folks, as much as I would love to sit and talk to Tim, we got lives. Well, this Dude, you, can keep, you can keep going. If you have any more, you can keep going. I didn't realize an hour went by. Exactly. I'm just like, well, I mean, you know, I guess you want to see one more. I listen, guys, uh, this is like, I'm doing a one take. I don't believe I'm not. This is like the raw edit. So eventually, as like the, as more people I get on, I'll get better at editing. But, you know, this is like the easy. Yeah. No, like, if you, if you have more questions, I'm down, man. Um, I didn't realize we ran an hour yet. No, it's ran an hour. That, that's like that's like I told you. You know, it's like listen with me. There's no gonna be no awkward silence. It's we wink <laughs> and we just have a good conversation, man. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Yeah. So hopefully, you know, I'm better than the publicist at uh at some random magazine. So I'm not. I'm not gonna. Do, I'm not gonna name drop. <laughs> yeah, no, you got you got information out of me. <laughs> I got my info out of you. So mm -hmm. uh, now with the Afterburner tour, you know, we're still going with the tour going on. 
is it do you think it's gonna feel weird you know be back and seeing people it's gonna feel mad weird for sure um but i'm like so excited dude like especially doing like doing two sets um andrew's gonna do two sets as well because he's doing the idola he's gonna do an idola thing too um yes it, it it makes it just like gives you even more of a purpose for being out there um and it's fun you know it's fun to do the shows where like uh, i'll open the set or i'll open the show with like wolf and bear you're like the opening band and everyone's like just beginning to like get into the you know the vibe of the show or whatever i mean, I mean like as soon as i see someone come out like that's it like i'm like All yeah. right, i'm in it's, it's, it's fun to start it off um and then it and then it's like totally a different thing when i have to go do it with dgd because like that's you're the, the headline event you know and everyone's there for dgd obviously and uh, uh well this point so like referred to every song and all that stuff so it's like a, a completely different set <laughs> i mean no, like, it's, it's rad i mean like well for me personally if i'm gonna go see the band like i'm i'm getting into every single band that's there like you know, even if I don't know the band, I'll get leaders. Yeah, yeah. Because I want to appreciate. Um, yeah, if you're going, uh, yeah, if you're going to the New York show, if I mean, if you don't have a ticket, let me know. I can get you in. You know what? Um, and then you can buck everyone backstage by doing interviews with them. <laughs> That'd be a great idea. <laughs> or at least somebody. I don't know. Yeah. I'll do good. Uh, at that point, I'll, uh, that's not Brian the interview. That's gonna be Brian the fangirl at that point. <laughs> you gotta have some type of portable interview rig with you. Yeah, you know, hopefully, uh, security lets me go with my equipment. I'll be like, no, 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 I'm with them. Yeah, I think there's like a road clip on for the iPhone to get really good, good interview audio and stuff like that. Yeah, it should be. We'll find out. But yeah, if you're going to, uh, if you don't have a ticket, let me know. I'll get you in for sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a lot. But, you know, I think, I think we've got enough answers for. Thanks, man. I think, yeah. answers. I think fans are going to be satisfied. And, oh, wait, I do have one more question. Sure. So this is actually the Afterburner guitar tab. Why in the hell didn't they release a bass book? Oh man, you know what? I don't know if they tried to what? I don't know if they tried to get me to do that before, but like uh I'm trying to think. No love for the bass player, man. Like, come on. <laughs> I know. I don't actually I barely know how to write or really look at I mean I I, I learned on tabs, but like dude it just takes a lot of time to do them. And like, I'm, I don't know how accurate I am at doing them. I know someone else does the, the tab work for, for DGD and I think will kind of helps out with that. But um, I don't know for the bass one. I think if we do a bass one, it's not going to be for like one album. I could probably do one for just like a couple of songs off of each album. Let's call it Tim's favorite yeah my, my picks or whatever but like yeah i mean i've been uploading to a youtube channel for years oh, yeah. like, oh. i tried yeah. to delete all by and now the comments on there are like where are the tabs actually like i i, I follow youtube channel like i try learning delete on base but i got it on like I, I i just can't learn but it's hard for me to learn by hand movement like I, yeah and it, and yeah it's kind of hard to see like if it's something fast it's kind of hard to see what's going on and then i i usually put the tuning in there and so people are always like what tuning is dgd or whatever and and it's like literally standard or drop d it's like we, we don't do but i'm like damn i wish you put a tab so i just know exactly yeah dude i i should i should and you know Louis from Wolfenberg could probably actually be the one to help me do it because he's like an absolute master at tabbing things out. Cool. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. I I guess knowing that there's like slight demand for that, I should probably I should probably do that. <laughs> I'm like a, I guess intro beginner slash intermediate bass slash guitar player. Yeah, I've been more into bass lately, so I'm just for like. Sure. So I'm like, all right, let me let me see if I can learn this by ear. I mean, I try to learn by ear, but I'm like, 
I need the tab. I just need the tab just to, like read. Yeah, just like having the tab is good because you're, yeah. you're certain what, yeah, what notes you're hitting and all that. Sometimes there's like passing tones and stuff like that that are really questionable or you're like, is that really what he's hitting right there? Exactly. Is that the right one? Like, oh, well, the tab's that's so, so, so what, you know? But yeah, yeah I, I hopefully, you know, I think that'd be good for fans and fans totally. Like yeah. I'll, I'll get around to one. I, <laughs> I'll, I'll do one. It just won't be for like one album. I'll, I'll do like, you know, I'll do like Lemon Meringue Tie and Carl Barker and, and, uh, you see whatever one. new ones. <laughs> yeah. Headhunter or something. But the, like the shit that I'm going to do for you guys right now, like I just got you some of you bass players out there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Otherwise, yeah, you're learning by ear, or like you can look at my channel and kind of try to figure out what's going on. But right. yeah, I I feel you. Tabs tabs make sense, and that's yeah. how a lot a lot of people. No, are. I gotta say, like you're Kaisel Kiesel. I don't know how to. Oh yeah, Kiesel. Your bass is they're fucking sick, bro. Like, if, thanks, if... dude. Yeah, no, I mean they were that was cool, like getting hooked up with them, and especially now that DG like everyone in DGD is on Kiesel. Um, like, yeah, those are like those are all like basically like one of a kind custom built for you. Um, obviously, like if a customer wanted an exact spec of like what I'm doing, they could probably look at what what it is and recreate it. But yeah, um, like dude, yeah, I gotta I gotta like uh, that'd be cool to do a signature base one day. You know, <laughs> you, you 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 can like yeah, I've been with a couple different companies over the years, um, and like people always ask what what what's up with that but like sometimes i you know the i've had the best relationship with kiesel yeah out of any so like more personal and uh jeff is like like the nicest guy in the world and uh he's like a fan of the band and stuff like that so that made the most sense i mean in the past I was playing like the Dingwall basses i was playing the schecter basses and schecter was really good um Fender. The fenders were just all out of my own personal collection. Fenders never given me anything. <laughs> and like, uh, but I see more with yeah. Kiesel. I see everyone else with Keys. I'm like, there's something. I'm like, okay. Keys gnarly, man. I, I just like, uh, when I went and did the new DGD record, usually like back in the day, I would, sometimes I would take two bases. Sometimes, you know, uh, well, like on Afterburner, I probably bought, I brought like five or six bases. But then for this newest record, um, I flew to Portland instead of drove, and I just brought one Kiesel bass, and that and it did made it on the whole entire record. Exactly. And it sounds it sounds awesome. Well, so like, hopefully, yeah, um, you know, Kiesel sees this and they really they they, they, they yeah. Have, they have <laughs> well, that. I, I told yeah, I told Jeff. I like I was like I just used this one bass on the every song of the record and that was the first. Uh usually we switch it around and like do do different stuff, but like for this record it's like really consistently it's all Kiesel. So so you know what? Kiesel we need that yeah. it's heavy Kiesel. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think Will. I'm pretty sure Will's only playing Kiesel's on on the album too. So. Yeah, yeah, he has a signature guitar too on Kiesel. So. Yeah, his is sweet. Yeah, I almost kind of like want to get one for myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the DGD guitar, uh, or uh, sorry, the Wolfenberg guitarist Louis is on Kiesel. And yeah, he, like, has, he has his Kiesel. I'm like, his is really his is great. Uh, yeah, he used that on uh, the entire Wolfenberg record. I don't know if he uh, used. It's anything like, like the little uh, pink and black one right oh that one's mine <laughs> that was yours? That, before he got his built uh yeah I, I i ordered a couple like wacky like custom designs from them but the one he used at pus cavern it, yeah that one's mine the type type x yeah pink and black <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that one's that one's really weird. I love showing that one to people because they're like, "What is this?" I'm like, how do you, I'm, "I'm thinking, how do I'm like, how the fuck do you tune this?" Yeah, I always, I, you know, it's funny. I always kind of hated on the headless uh, instruments forever and ever and ever. I always thought that they looked wrong, and uh, and then like I started buying them uh, or like you know using my artist discount for for Kiesel because like I you know got my bass stuff right. But, it, you know, they're not going to just give me a bunch of, you know, free guitars. So you get an artist discount. 
Yeah. So I'll start hitting them up and I'm like, yeah, I want like this headless, you know, headless guitar. I bought like two headless guitars and do those things are so fun. And like, they're so tight, they're tiny because they don't have the headstock. So you can travel with them easier. You know, they can like go up in the, you know, the overhead bins and the planes and stuff like that. They're, they're rad. Like I couldn't recommend Kiesel more. And that's like, even if I wasn't endorsed, I would still say the same. Thing. Exactly. So again, Kiesel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll literally drop all the money that I don't have right now. Yeah, shout out to Kiesel, man. I, I was looking at Kiesel. I was like, let me see. Uh, then I saw the price. I was like, you know what? Let me save up a little more money for this. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. They're, they're so special and one of a kind. That's kind of how you can justify the price on those. Exactly. Yeah. So they, if I'm going to the base, it's going to be one base, but that shit got to be worth it. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's, you know, it's not like going to Guitar Center and just grabbing something off the wall. It's, it's, yeah. a, much more special than that like and I, I love the sounds like when that keys was off or like me i know you like you custom it but like i'm like but then you go on the website it's like you custom your base and you try to find your sound I'm like all right this is this is something like it's yeah it's something that's like you make your base and like, you develop your sound like we want to use you want it's super sweet yeah i, <laughs> I, I love yeah <laughs> i always like, love and we love to see a company that like not isn't it of course from the business perspective but also it's like no nah, it's about you right well here's the thing like with fenders and stuff like that uh when i used to play them i still have them and all that like fenders are funny because like you buy them and then you basically strip out parts to make them better and like enhance them and buy cooler shit for them yeah but with Kiesel, you do not do that. Like you, you leave it how it is, and that's how it's supposed to be. They're not meant to be hot rodded. They're already hot rodded from from the start. But that's kind of the difference. Like you know, that's that's why Kiesel's more way more enticing to me than Fender. And I'm a Fender fan. I'm a Fender fan. I got I got a swag got a stamp for guitar. So. But they yeah. Kiesel has been calling my attention. Dude, yeah, it's worth the wait for sure. <laughs> so but you know what? I think that's our answers. And by the way, yeah, I think those are good for now. But just real quick, favorite song to be that you're excited to play on the tour? Mm. You hope on the tour? Yeah. Hmm. Trying to think off Afterburner. Well, we like had Prisoner ready to go. And then what was the what was the other one i don't know what we're gonna add we actually haven't really discussed what we're gonna obviously prisoner will probably be in the set but uh i, I think three wishes maybe that's um, i love i love that song based on this i that's why i say like that's where kiesel got my attention I'm like if this yeah song, three wishes and then uh and lyrics lie maybe if we do that okay uh, those would probably be the ones i would be excited for and then like uh for like Wolf and Bear, like we haven't really played. I don't. Oh yeah, we've never played Street Rat or Monstro live. Um, besides, we played Street Rat at, at the studio session at Puss yeah. Cavern. But uh, for them, yeah, I. I mean, we'll by then we'll probably be whipping out new songs off the record. But like, yeah, for at least for DGD, uh, lyrics lie and Three Wishes. If those make it in the set, I hope be so. pretty. Oh, I'll be stuck. Yeah. <laughs> I hope so, man. Anyway, folks. This has probably been a good first episode. Again, raw, uncensored. <laughs> there was a couple of, you know, of internet lags, but that's okay. You know, there's only so much you can do. You did a good job, man. Thanks oh, for having me. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. You know, guys, remember, shoot your shot, never give up. And this is going to be my main message. I'm going to say that at the end of the show, everything, be positive and fuck negativity. I agree. Amen. Thanks, dude. And right, Tim, thank you so much. And I'll see you all when I have a next guest. So thanks and hope you guys like this. Sweet. See ya.